lot of media, they want to see more of Jamison Williams. The Lions have taken it slow with him coming back. What do you think about the approach that they're doing? They're taking it slow, limited snap counts, implementing him into this offense. Do you want to see more of him, or do you want to continue to see this slow implementation so he understands the offense, gets more of that NFL shape, doesn't hurt himself? What do you want to see with our 12th pick in the draft? Well, I don't think you need to rush him. I think you just you just need to bring him along like he's been uh, pulled along. They're allowing him to build confidence. They're giving him plays that he needs to do from a spot position. I think him stretching the field has been one of the biggest plays because he is a deep throw. We've seen him get behind the defense now, one on a busted coverage that he catches for a touchdown, and then one that was an underthrown pass by Golf that could have led to another touchdown for him after only a handful of attempts. So that tells you about the explosiveness in which he's going to give the ability to stretch the safeties and the defense and keep them honest. Um, he's going to prove that value. And at this point, I don't think he's the guy you you run underneath unless you get man to man coverage and he's going to use his speed like they use with Raymond and some of the others like Josh Reynolds and even Shark to a certain degree underneath. Um, he's going to provide uh, them the opportunities for the big play home run threat. But I just don't think right now you need to you need to force that now. I will say this, they will need his ability. They will need that big play ability in the postseason. So I would say, you know what, continue to give him his confidence, continue to give him his, his reps, continue to give him that ability to really get game ready, uh, like what we're seeing. Uh, but I would like to see him get him a couple quick passes so that he can catch you know, some passes early. That means a lot to young players. It builds confidence. Uh, in that and it also gives them the the, the feel of the the, phys the physicalness of of the game itself. So I would like to see them try and get them a few more passes in the in a short underneath and some of those man to man coverages. Agree with you fully. And he's a, he's an excellent route runner, one of the best route trees that I've seen in the draft when I was watching him. Just and everyone talks about his speed, but good God, he can really hit that route tree like no other. And I'd love to see that play on the field because I think he'd do an amazing job to get open and then make a big play with the yak there. One of the reasons this offense has done phenomenal is Ben Johnson. We had time to digest that play where it was the play action to Brock Wright for a 51-yard touchdown. A defense like the Jets who does not give up big plays. That's what they're known for, top five defense. What worked so well in that play where they completely fooled the Jets and Brock Wright, an unknown guy, gets all the way down for a touchdown? They were completely caught off guard because there was blown assignment. In that, you can't take the fake on the block down and then allowing him to release. There is someone who had man coverage. There's always, whether it be the linebacker or someone, a safety, someone had man coverage, did not pay attention, did not get the call, did not do something right. And that was what we call a busted and blown assignment. Um, that's what led to that ultimate play. And then after catching the ball, it's not like he caught one that was contested or one that he had to run away from a defender. We're talking about a wide open catch. And then before you know, you go 20, 30 yards before you even get someone coming in to play. That tells you right there it was it was a blown coverage because he is an eligible receiver. Whenever you have eligible players uh, that can go out, even what we saw with Panay Sewell uh, when he caught his his first catch and, and made it look spectacular. Uh, someone's assigned to anyone who is part of the ability to be considered uh, eligible to go out for passes. Uh, and when every time you see a busted coverage like that, someone blew an assignment. You're, you know offense a lot, and you, you've been in great offenses, one of the greats of all in, in Detroit history. When you look at Ben Johnson, do you see this man to potentially be a head coaching candidate after such a performance this year, what he has done? I know it's only been one year, but do you think a team could potentially poach him because he has got a great mind? I'll say this. What's the difference between Aaron Glenn as defensive coordinator being considered for head coaching position or Ben Johnson, the offensive coordinator, being considered for a head coaching position. And I say there's there's really nothing that's different, right? Other than the fact that they go off of who's hot and who's not. There are coaching positions that become available. They look at which teams are hot. They look at which defenses and offenses are playing well. And they, they bring those names uh, to the table. And you want to start asking those individuals, are they available? Potentially, could they come in and now be – uh, evergreen and, and fresh and come in and be able to run an organization or a unit for for a while. And uh, I think they become those candidates that at the very least they get on the radar. 
whether or not he gets consideration or even gets asked to be a head coach or leave. Um, I, I think that's going to be a little premature after having just one year and doing what he's done. And it, it hasn't even been a full year. It's been uh, something that's kind of materialized as the players have materialized. And then it does not guarantee you success unless you have the same chemistry of players. You have the same rapport with those players and that you can also get the same productivity and impact from those those teams. So it's it's more than just you did well at a position. So we think you're a good candidate for a head coach. I think there's going to be opportunities for him, whether it will come next year or not. Not sure. But right now, I know he's proven to be an extremely valuable uh, person and personnel administrator coach uh, for this organization right now. And from all what I'm hearing and what I'm, I'm understanding from the players, they absolutely love him. And Jared Goff loves him. Uh, the players are playing hard for him. It reminds me of my time with Tom Moore. When you feel that you have someone that knows you and knows how to dial up the talent, uh, that's what you want. And I think defensively, you've seen that in Aaron Glenn as well. I love what I've seen from Ben Johnson. I love what I've seen from Aaron Glenn. But I think there's one guy that deserves a lot of credit. I, you don't hear his name a lot, and that's Deuce Staley. I think he's done a phenomenal job as assistant head coach. The guy's a leader of men. And I think if there is a team out there looking for another Dan Campbell type, you don't really hear you know Dan Campbell's name before the Lions hired him. I think that would be him. The guy is just a leader. He knows what he's doing. He's well-respected. He played great when he was a pro. And if you watch Hard Knocks, he is definitely exactly the type of leader you want in your football team. Do you think potentially he should get consideration? Because I think he should. Well, there's a lot of – Play. I mean, we're looking at just the Detroit Lions, and we've already named, um, what, one, two, three potential people that could be head coaches uh, in the NFL. So I, I think um, we, we don't we want to leave some room for everyone. Can Deuce Staley have that? Absolutely. I think he can take on a more valuable position. Uh, these, these coaches, let me tell you, they, they will do, when they're brought in under leadership like Dan Campbell, they're going to be connected. They're going to be loyal. They're going to be loyal to the players. And I don't see many, I don't see these guys right now really wanting to jump and go anywhere. It'd have to be something compelling. And I think it, it's almost like you go talk to the family collectively, including the players and everyone to say, Hey, I'm thinking about making this move and feel like you get that blessing because I feel like this team and these coaches and these players, they have grown together. They've grown to bond. And I think there's going to be something that goes beyond just the free agency market. I think there's loyalty because when you can build something that wasn't there before you came in, you're less likely to want to jump because someone throws extra dollars at you. So uh, that's going to be something that's going to be interesting to see as contracts become uh, available as long as this team continues to win and have a positive upswing. Uh, there's a potential that there's more benefits and they're going to reap more rewards than just the fact that, you know, they're starting to put more wins in the column. And I, I like this conversation regardless of seeing any of these guys get a head coaching job. It's because then you're getting our coaching tree, the Detroit Lions coaching tree, Dan Campbell, something that's never happened here in Detroit. You know, we're always looking for the next guy from the Patriots or from this team and that team develop their way. seems like we're starting to develop our own way, and I, and I do think that's appealing. And I think it's awesome for, you know, Dan Campbell and the rest of his coaches, his, his former players, absolutely love it.